talk about brain metastases, which is a topic that got some significant airplay at this meeting. It, it is a very common complication of lung cancer. Uh, one important uh, presentation was a, a UK study presented by uh, Dr. Mulvena uh, and colleagues that suggested there was no benefit to doing whole brain radiation compared to just steroids and supportive care. Uh, but the survival was really quite limited uh, in both groups. W Lena, what did you think of the study? And does that change in practice in any way? I mean, it was very provocative, but I found it very hard to interpret. A uh, two-month survival is, I don't think, what we commonly see. And I don't think any of us would use or recommend whole brain radiotherapy with that in mind that that's really what we're getting. And I don't think that's our experience. And maybe that's the fact that there's moving targets of populations that we are treating a lot of patients with adenocarcinoma, oncogene-driven cancers that live a long time, despite the fact that they may have brain meds at presentation. So it, it, it's hard to put those results into context. I think they're to be commended for the trial, but it really does question how were they how were they selecting patients for the trial? I know that only 30% had a low performance status, but it seems like they really did have difficulty getting patients to enroll to the trial. So I'm not sure who were those patients enrolling to the trial and what were the other factors that might have led to their survival outcomes being so poor. Right. I mean, at the end of the day, the survival in both groups was yes. lower than we would really expect to see and make make you wonder whether it's generalizable Jean Charles? No, I fully agree. I wouldn't, I wouldn't offer that trial to any of my patients. I'm yeah. sorry to say that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's borderline. I mean, yes, yeah, sure, the question is relevant, but uh, I mean, patients in good performance status where you offer steroids as an option, I don't know. I mean, I think French patients really want to leave. Uh, they prefer <laughs> champagne to steroids. <laughs> <laughs> it's not either or. But there was another uh, trial about managing brain metastases that was actually in the plenary session presented uh, by Dr. Paul Brown that looked at stereotactic radiosurgery for one to three brain metastases and questioned whether there was a value to whole brain radiation in addition. Did not show that and was also focused a lot on cognitive side effects and emphasized that there was a detriment, as we might expect, from administering whole brain radiation. Do you think this applies to clinical practice? And does this mean anything to patients who present with 8, 10, or 12 brain metastases instead of 1 to 3, uh, Jean Charles? Well, I tend to believe so. I mean, I hate whole brain radiotherapy. If I had lung cancer, I would do everything to avoid that because really it has neurocognitive uh, uh, consequences. You become bald. I mean, when we have, no, but it's true. Come on. As you say, this is palliative setting, yeah, no. you know, and I, I really do everything I can in my life to avoid whole brain radiotherapy. I think it's one of the most, maybe because I'm an intellectual and I know that's the only muscle who works properly. <laughs> uh, I, I really think it's important that to, we also treat the brain of our patients as we will wish ourselves. So, uh, you know, we have many systemic chemotherapies and many kinase inhibitors that penetrate beautifully the brain. You presented data on alectinib that penetrates the brain in a fantastic way. And I'm sure if I had all translocated with 12 brain meds, I'd rather get a, a pill of alectinib or the new uh, Pfizer 3922 compound rather whole brain, whole brain radiotherapy. And I think this um, trial is important because it really shows that Stereotactic radiotherapy has to be pushed to its limits. I mean, in Europe, we tend to say three, okay, above three, no. Why? I mean, there are, I know you, the US, go to 10, to 12, mm -hmm. uh, and I think this is going to trigger a very heated discussion because many of our radiotherapy colleagues will still believe that whole brain radiotherapy should be the standard of care in patients who have multiple meds and some symptoms. But I found the results pretty provocative and interesting. And uh, I, it just comforts me in the idea that radiotherapy is important. We should use it. But if we can avoid using it through, you know, like a napalm bomb, bomb that you throw all over the place, it's better targeted radiotherapy of brain lesions, in my opinion, is better. The discussant made a good point that you might want to think in the context of two fronts. You've got the intracranial front of disease and the extracranial, and 
there's you have to look at them as a competing threats. Uh, what do you think of that? And, and and is that potentially a way to frame whether whole brain radiation plays a role? If you know, if you have minimal extracranial disease versus if you have much more extensive. Um, I think that was a, a good discussion. It really demonstrated that there was survival benefit to these selected population who had really intracranial disease as the primary burden of disease and the primary active burden of disease. But I, I guess I actually would withdraw a little bit from that. I mean, the study was really about whether adding whole brain radiation right. to stereotactic radiosurgery um, led to any improvement. It wasn't really about either or. Um, which is a different question, I think. And uh, I don't actually think, I'm not sure what it is in France, but there have been other trials like this, and I don't think it really is the standard practice in the U.S. to add them both together. In fact, I think a more common practice is moving towards more use of stereotactic radiosurgery to push it to its limits, as you say, especially in the U.S. where we do it for many lesions, we do it repeatedly, um, and reserve whole brain radiation. So I don't think that that really is you know, necessarily a practice changing trial, even if you take the results at face value, because I don't think there are a lot of people that are doing whole brain radiation at the same time as stereotactic radiosurgery. I do think that the neurocognitive issue and the neurologic deficits of stereotactic radiosurgery is a moving target because we're pushing it to its limits. I think we are seeing much more consequences of radiation necrosis due to stereotactic radiosurgery because we're doing it more, we're doing it repeatedly, mm -hmm. and we're doing it on more lesions. And I think those entire types of trials are probably going to have to be repeated because what they were based on right now is treating a very limited number of lesions, treating them once. Mm -hmm. That's a moving target.